Are you tired of going to work every day to a job that you hate and being around people you don't really like and you're ready to dive headfirst into starting a new business? Before you do that, I want to give you five things that I wish that I knew before starting a business. Now give me my theme music. Ah, exciting, thrilling, fun, freedom, lots of money. That's all people think about when they are starting a new business. They don't think about the other things that come along with those assets if you even get to that level. So in today's video, I'm going to give you the five things that I wish I knew before starting a new business. But before I get into these five things, make sure that you subscribe to this channel if you have not already and hit that little bell right there so that you know every single time that I drop a new video. All right, let's get started. The first thing I wish I knew was that it affects all your relationships, whether it's friends, it's family, it's dating, it is whatever type of relationship is going to affect it and it's probably not going to be positive with your friends. If you're really into your business and you're really on that beginning grind, you're declining plenty of invites. Happy hours are at a minimum, if at all. Friday nights are in. Saturdays and Sundays are working, especially when you're still holding on to your job. So you're not going to really be able to have a bustling social life and start a business at the same time. But you still have to go to your nine to five or remote job and your free time will be spent in your business. So that's going to affect being with your family. If you are cohabitating or in marriage or you have kids, that's going to be time taken away from them. If you have that social life I just spoke of, you're not going to be able to do things like you used to, if at all, depends on your dedication level. And if you're in a relationship, especially when you don't have a supportive partner, it's going to be very, very difficult to balance. For example, years ago, my, when I first started my entrepreneurial journey and I was still in my nine to five and I was starting up, I was in a relationship with a very unsupportive partner. And the more I grinded, the more distraction she became. And it got to the point, well, you want to do things like watch movies and go to eat. And I'm trying to build a business so I can get about this job in a couple months. And it was one of those things that needed to end. And um, fortunately, it did. And I was able to spend all of my waking moments to get out of the job that I absolutely hated at the exact time I planned on it. You're also not going to be able to travel much, if at all, simply because your free time again is working on your business. And even if you're not in a nine to five, and you have a more flexible schedule, depends on how fast you want to build. Most of your time should be spent, of course, doing self-care and keeping yourself in shape and working. That's really all you have time for. The second thing I learned is running a business is a money pit. It's quite expensive because it's always something. Depends, of course, what business you're in. But for right now, we're just going to speak of the digital space, the online businesses. And every time you turn around, there's a service, a monthly fee, there's some equipment that you need. And next thing you know, you're several thousands of dollars in. And then your time is your commodity. So it's like, okay... I'm not really a graphic designer, so I'm going to have to pay someone to create a logo or spend hours learning how to use graphic design software to design something. It still may not come out right. So starting a business is very expensive on time and money. And I did not realize how much of a money pit it was in the very beginning. I mean, it still is, but the only good thing is I'm making more profit than what I'm spending. So I feel more justified. But in the beginning, you're not really making any profit, and if you are, it's not as much as you're spending in general if you're trying to start a long-term successful business. The third thing is, man, the grind never ever stops. It seemed like it goes on and on and on. You know, in the beginning, it was, all right, I'm going to work pretty much 30, 40 hours a week outside of my 50 plus at my job. So literally, I'm leaving work at 5.30. I get home, change clothes, go to a Starbucks or go outside of my house until midnight working those six hours 
in the evening, Monday through Thursday, and then, you know, take a day off on Friday evening and back at it on Saturday and Sunday. So in total, I'm working 80 hours a week. And I thought, well, you know, when it's time to quit my job, I'll be able to spend that time and only work, you know, maybe 40, 50 hours a week. Uh -uh. That is not realistic in most cases. Of course, you're going to hear people say, oh, I only work 20 hours a week and I have passive income. Two things. There's no such thing as passive income. And the second thing is if you're only working 20 hours a week, you are an anomaly. And whatever you're selling, you need to bottle up and sell more of it. That's just not reality. In the beginning stages, you're going to be on the grind and you never see an end to it. Because no matter how much work you get done, there's almost more work to do. But in that beginning grind, especially if you don't have a lot of beginning capital, it's very intense and very work intensive. One thing I'm going to say, and I'm just going to be honest, and it's not because I'm a business coach, but you're going to need some type of mentor, accountability partner, or business coach to keep you on track. In my opinion, that's not really an option. First thing you're going to say is, I can't afford one, but it's not necessarily a paid person. It may be someone that you know that's successful that you can bounce ideas off of or someone that you know that's trying to get where you are going. And if you don't know those people, you can actually go out and network and seek those people. Otherwise, of course, I will recommend coaching because having a coach is kind of like having cliff notes, right? You don't have to read the whole book because they read it for you and they're giving you the main idea of the story. So your business coach is telling you things that you can do to save lots of time and money. Although you're paying that person, you're also getting the cheap code and the shortcut to get you where you're going, which is profitability much faster. So I highly recommend probably having a mentor and a coach because they're going to keep you track. They're going to keep you accountable and you can easily have someone to bounce ideas off of and have no stakes and what you're doing other than they wanting you to be successful. And my last point, the freedom that you get from entrepreneurship is unparalleled. If you are able to have freedom of time, freedom of location, and freedom of income, that is the freedom lifestyle itself. That's one of the things that I teach. If you are a person that have control of your time, you can work out in the middle of the day, you can sleep late, you can sleep get up super early, go to bed early, you can do pretty much what you want. Although what you'll find is in order to be a successful entrepreneur, you also have to be disciplined and you'll find that you probably will stick to certain things, but you have the flexibility and the option not to. And then freedom of location. One good thing that the pandemic brought was a little bit of freedom of location to a lot of work that's able to work remotely. But what I found with talking to people that work remote, they're still unable to really be free because they have um, they have to sign in through VPNs at work and they're only allowed to work in certain regions because of time. So there's still restrictions. When you run your own show, you can go work in Bucharest, you can work in Thailand, you can work in Australia, or you can work in Miami. Or change every week or just stay where you are. It doesn't matter. You can work in Montana. Wherever there's internet connection, when you're doing an online business, you can work. So the good news is having that freedom to say, you know what, I'm going to go X for two months. If you live in a cold climate, you can easily be a snowbird and go somewhere warm for the next couple months and then come back home and enjoy your life. But when you don't have that freedom and that, that flexibility, you're, you feel stuck. But having the freedom of location to be able to work when you want and how you want is golden. I still have office space that I rarely go to, but I like to have the option. I work in my house most of the time, but sometimes I like getting out. I may work out on the beach for a little bit. I may go to a restaurant, work for a little bit. I may go to a hotel lobby, or I may go out of town or out of the country. It doesn't affect my work schedule whatsoever wherever I am. And that's one of the best things about having that freedom. Well, I hope those five things enlighten you about having an online business. And if I missed anything, go ahead and drop them in the comments. And if you haven't by now, and hit that thumbs up, it really helps the channel. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button and hit the notifications bell so that every time I drop a new video, you will be notified. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Nah, 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 no. yeah.